Now we'll be reviewing Captain America Civil War. The Russo brothers are back from Winter Soldier, and let's just say they did an amazing job. For starters, this film brings not just some of the people that we know from the past, from uh, what was it, the previous Marvel films, but they also bring in new Marvel characters that actually uh, add to the story. And they're not just standing around. This is, so that's the best part about it. Another thing that was so great about this film, uh, Captain America Civil War, was just uh, the dialogue. I love the dialogue. I, I, I love the interaction between each and every character. Uh, each and every individual that comes out in this story plays an important role. Even the villain. Uh, the villain is somewhat the weakest link of this film. But other than that, it's still an amazing film. It really is. The cinematography is beautiful. The action scenes are well choreographed. I mean, all around this film is, you could say, almost flawless. Now, Captain America Civil War deals with Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark, a.k.a. Tony Stark, and uh, Chris Evans, a.k.a. Captain America, coming to heads on what is the future of the Avengers what should happen to the Avengers because of the huge collateral damage that has happened in the previous films because of the involvement of the Avengers to save the world or to stop some sort of uh, evil gene, uh, evil uh, plan being executed. The Avengers have also caused a lot of collateral damage and that's one of the main reasons that uh, the United Nations has come together and say, you know, these people have to be uh, placed in check. The Avengers cannot no longer go wherever they want to. They have to basically follow procedure before they go out and save the world. And that's the big, giant, you know, kind of uh, uh, bumping heads that the Avengers have with one another. I mean, everyone brings in some good ideas and good also points of views. Um, I love what C. Rogers says that, you know, the United Nations, even though it's there and it's trying to do the best it can to to safeguard the civilians, I mean, they're run by dif different governments that have different agendas. And some of those agendas are not what uh, is best for the Avengers. And the same thing with Robert Downey Jr. where he comes in and he speaks about how it's, it's we have to be uh, held accountable for what we do and we can't just be a rogue group because of certain things that the Hulk did in New York City or certain things that, um, what was it, Ultron did in Sokovia or uh, other things that has happened in different parts around the world like in South uh, Africa when the Hulk went crazy and it started just, you know, destroying things right and left and uh, Tony Stark had to go in and with the big giant Hulk buster and I mean, it was a beautiful scene, but at the same time, there was a lot of lives that were just damaged and destroyed and that's what it just... It, they, you can't, you can't, what was it, uh, erase that. You can't go back in time and fix it, you know. You you have to deal with the consequences. And another person that ha that appears from the past is General Ross. General Ross, who we've seen in the past from the Incredible, what was it, no, the Invisible Hulk on the uh, Incredible Hulk with the Edward Norton one. Um, he comes back and he plays basically like the bridge or the, the politician that is you know, speaking for the United Nation that's coming before the Avengers. And I mean, I just I just felt like everybody had a, a, a good point of view on what they th thought of the whole situation. You look at two uh, military veterans like Sam, aka the Falcon, and Rhodey, aka Iron Man, how they also disagree of each other, and that's because they're military personnel. So that's pretty interesting, you know, that makes you think about all that. But even then, I mean, there are certain things where it was just, you know, a gray line. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Vision makes a good example or makes a, a good uh, statement that, you know, to, ever since the Avengers have appeared, there has been other people that have come and tried to uh, take them out. And, you know, every force has an equal force coming against it. So in a sense, the Avengers are the cause of the problems of the Earth. So... And he goes into detail on that. Uh, the performances were done very well. I, I was just very, very impressed with everyone. I mean, everyone shined in this film. Just everyone. 
I mean, and the scenes are, are have the story itself. It's not just a bunch of scenes put together so we can have one act, big giant action pack. I mean, even the beginning of the, the Avengers, I mean, the uh, Captain America Civil War, there's a purpose why the Avengers are there in this African nation. There's also a purpose why um, certain things happen in the United Nations. And there's uh, another reason why it happened in Russia. And it just, it flowed very well. There was a, a, a very... Um, what was it? Organic way of this story coming to pass. It, it was. I mean, when I when I finished watching the Captain America Civil War, I was just taken away with everything. Uh, I was taken away with uh, just the Russo brothers just executing everything beautifully. Now, the weakest link is uh, is the villain. Boy. I wouldn't call him a. I will. I will call him a, a broken soul or a broken uh, mercenary who lost his family during uh, Age of Ultron, and he has, he, he's been trying to, how can I put it, uh, get revenge on the Avengers. And the way he does it is that he tries to find all these individuals that work for Hydra, and he just um, brings uh, chaos, well not chaos, but he just orchestrates all these different events for the Avengers to have a, a, a major, you know, you can say civil war with one another. Uh, one of the things that he orchestrates is, you know, Captain America and Iron Man going head to head, even worse than before. Um, I don't want to spoil for you, but let's just say Steve Rogers knows something that Winter Soldier did and affects Iron Man, and they just go at it. I mean, they just go at it hardcore. I'm talking about hardcore. I mean, you can feel the blows and you can feel the words that they're speaking to one another um, between Steve Rogers and Tony Stark. And it's, it's, I mean, when, I don't know if you guys seen the trailer, but if you've seen the trailer, that scene where Tony Stark, he looks at uh, Steve Rogers and he says, you know, um, so was I. In other words, Steve Rogers is saying, I can't turn my back on my friend. And he... Iron Man looks at him like, you know, so was I. I mean, I'm, I'm your friend, too. You can't turn your back on me, too. So in, in the face, the facial expressions that uh, Robert Downey Jr., you know, showed in that scene, they, they were powerful, man, because you look at his eyes and he, you see uh, a hurt and a broken individual. You, you see that this genius, uh, this guy who has a lot of money, who has a lot of things going for him, it's still hurt uh, from what Steve Rogers has done to him and what has happened to him in the past. Marvel Studios, you're, you're hitting everything out of the ballpark. I mean, uh, another uh, uh, amazing thing that happened in the American Civil War was uh, Black Panther. Black Panther was just mind-boggling. It really just got my attention. Uh, the actor who played him, uh, what was it, Boswin? He interpreted that character flawlessly. I kid you not. When I saw Black Panther in the scene, he, it's like he just leaped out of the comic books and he looked sweet. Like, you know, the fights, the, the way he spoke, the way he interacted with the rest of the, the characters, he was, it was just awesome. <laughs> That's all I got to say about Black Panther. He, he was awesome. <laughs> I mean, even his motivation and, and his, his way of dealing with things. You know, at first he starts off well, with a, uh, with a, you know, a, a hurt man that wants revenge. But by the end of it, he's like, you know, I don't want the hurt to take over me. I don't want the vengeance to, to just consume me. So uh, another person that really also took this film to another level was Spider-Man. Uh, Spider-Man was done, I think, what was it, uh, was portrayed by uh, Tom Holland. And Tom Holland delivered as Spider-Man. He spoke uh, this American accent that you can say, hey, it was it was done pretty well. There's certain scenes where kind of like his his British uh, words were a little bit coming out, but uh, as Spider-Man and as Peter Parker, perfect. Because in the past, when you look at uh, Garfield or Maguire, uh, they either get Peter Parker done very well, like they do Peter Parker very well, or they do Spider-Man very well, but when it comes to them doing both of them, it doesn't 
go that well or doesn't seem that real. But in this one, you see Peter Parker, you know, getting stuff from the dumpsters or uh, what was it? Uh, being uh, like an engineer, a scientist, and uh, actually acting like a teenager, which in the past it would be like a, a late 20 or early 30 year old interpreting. <laughs> A high school kid uh, so you, you would see that but in this one in Captain America Civil War he uh, he came out and he shined he really did uh, there's there's a, a beautiful scene where he, like Winter Soldier just tries to punch him and he just grabs his spider just grabs his arm and he's like whoa dude you have a metal arm that's cool or that's awesome and I was like yeah that's basically a teenager would act like that so uh, I had a great time with this film. I I really did. Uh, I just uh, I, I just can't. I don't know what else to say. It was a very well done film. Um, CGI. The CGI really helped enhance the film. It wasn't uh, cheaply done. There's just I guess one or two scenes that I can say that really felt weak. That the CGI wasn't that well done. It was in one scene was a truck driving through the African nation. And it wasn't Wakanda, it was another uh, African nation that was close to Wakanda. So, and I do recommend it for the family. Uh, uh, let me see, there is no duty, no cussing. There is, let me see, yep, yeah, there's no nudity or no cussing at all. Uh, it's pretty, I think it's what, two hours and 38 minutes, two hours and 39 minutes. So it's a good, you know, decent time.